So I had set rules for myself. One was like, bro, you can't go on social media no more. In this video, you're gonna see why legendary rap artist J. Cole avoids social media like the plague. But it's no wonder because social media is linked to depression, anxiety, and that constant comparing ourselves to other people. I mean, how many times have I went to even post something and then I get caught in the feed and I'm like, oh, well my life's not as good as them. Or maybe I'm writing a song in the studio. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take a pause to see what's going on in Instagram. And next thing you know, I'm comparing myself and discouraging myself from working on stuff. But let's jump into the video. It wasn't enough appreciation. It wasn't enough like, uh recognition of what I was actually doing. It was okay. too much emphasis and focus on where I wasn't yet. And okay. that hadn't been me up until that point. You know, it's so easy to beat ourselves up thinking we should be further along than we are, especially when it comes to comparing ourselves. But Theodore Roosevelt says, comparison is the thief of joy. And John Acuff says, don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. You know, a lot of times we look at people's life, and we don't realize like, look, they've been in this for 10 years, and yet we've only been in it for 10 days or 10 months, and we're having this crazy comparison. Look, you're only in a fight against you. You're only in a race against you and what you can do. So if you're comparing yourself, stop it and just keep taking action and keep setting goals and going after your dream. Is that you putting pressure on yourself? Is that you? not being happy with not hearing certain things about the work you're doing. A hundred percent. Okay. That was it. It was All right. ego driven. A hundred percent. It was Got like it. uh there was a nugget somebody dropped for me. They didn't know what I was going through necessarily, but maybe they maybe they saw something. But it it, it sparked a practice that would lead me to exactly what you started the conversation with, which was like just a more like peaceful place in my life and more of a whew, whew, you know what I mean? And that was uh at the time I had and at this time it's it's the team, my team ain't right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At that time when it's ego driven, like and, and you're not getting the things you want. And at this time for me, it was like, oh, the Grammys, they not oh, the uh the such and such magazine or this boom, boom, boom. Why I'm not in the why I'm not up here. You know what I mean? This is quietly what was happening in my mind. First of all, I believe it's a God-given desire to want more and to want to achieve and keep growing. But there's also something to be said about contentment. And there's a quote that says, gratitude turns what we have into enough. Mahatma Gandhi says, satisfaction lies in the effort, not the attainment. Full effort is full victory. But one of my favorite quotes is this by Franklin D. Roosevelt. He says, happiness is not in the mere possession of money. It lies in the joy of achievement, in the thrill of creative effort. And isn't that what we do as artists and musicians? We're in that creative effort creating and making something great. But of course, we want people to appreciate it. So how do you appreciate where you are with wanting more? Well, Philippians 4.11 says this, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry. But I just freaking love that, right? Because like J. Cole's talking about wanting the Grammy, or maybe you want to be on this tour, or want to be top billboard charts or whatnot. So it's being content while we're still chasing these dreams and not getting distracted by social media. So I had set rules for myself. One was like, bro, you can't go on social media no more. Like okay. we're from the first generation of like entertainers, celebrities, whatever, where it's like, bro, you could literally at any minute see what somebody's saying about you, you know what I mean? And it's like, there was nobody to tell you like cigarettes. When the whole world for decades was smoking cigarettes, there wasn't, a, there wasn't anybody loudly saying like, uh, that's that's gonna kill you yeah, in about, you probably shouldn't do that. It you took a long time for somebody to, to realize how harmful this was. Yeah. And, and similarly, we're in, a, we're in a generation where our entertainers, our basketball players, our boom, boom, like no one was there. And even now, nobody's there to be like, don't yeah. Google yourself, don't, don't search your name on boom, boom. So I say all that to say, I had set some rules for myself, some baseline rules like, yo, don't, don't go on Twitter, don't read your replies, yeah. do not search your name, boom, boom, boom. That's rule number one, number two. I love what J. Cole said about setting boundaries in his life and not going on social media, and he's not alone. Steve Jobs says the only way to do great work is to love what you do and set your boundaries for success. So that means blocking time, 
to create and not going on social media, not letting anybody text you or those different dings and just shut it off so you can do great work. Warren Buffett says the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is that very successful people, they say no to almost everything. So are you willing to say no? Let's jump into J. Cole's success tip number two. When you're creating, you gotta create from a pure place only. Like there was a rule I set for myself, like everything has to only be truly what you feel in your heart. And this is of course coming because you saw, you saw yourself do the opposite. Oh, you saw yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah. you saw yourself dive deep yeah. into the space of social media. I'm searching. Yeah. I see what they're saying. Oh. I'm getting angry. Oh yeah. I'm getting irritated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, what the f sure. Okay, now I'm creating and my and, creative and is coming is, from and, yes, I'm, bro. this is infusing 100%. and influencing my creative. 100%. I see what you said on the yeah, yeah. like it's, it's now 100%. becoming a part. You the know? nastiest place to ever do some art, artful, yeah. some and some pure. It's just like yo, you can't. It's like you have to re leave all room. I feel like in the creative process, for like for God. If you read Genesis one one, it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So what do we know about God? That he's a creator. And he says that he created us in his image, right? But what's also really interesting is that it says that now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over it and God said, let there be light. And so just understand as creatives, sometimes we're creating in darkness. Sometimes we're creating in pain, going through a tough time. It feels like it's not working, but that's your opportunity to speak light, just like our creator did. Also, since you're still watching this video, I want to invite you to our next five day Spotify challenge where I'm showing you how to market and get your music out there. I show you how to collaborate with other people get on those editorial playlists and just get that music and message that is in here, conquer that fear and get it out to the people. You're also going to get to download my book, Spotify Profits 2.0. You know, these are the music marketing and business strategies for the new singles economy. That's one of the biggest mistakes artists are making right now. They're still whipping out full albums when it needs to be singles dropping singles three to four weeks apart minimum and then marketing the junk out of each one. So click the link below this video, go to 10 X your and get a Spotify challenge ticket. And I'm, I'm going to be hosting the whole thing and helping you just grow your music, but let's keep going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the minute you start like thinking about what somebody else is going to think about it, boom, boom, boom. I caught myself in that space for a moment and it was so unfamiliar to me because that's never how I used to work. Mm -hmm. And it was, and so to get up out of that, I had set these ground rules. Was it a struggle though? Was it, uh, was it an easy transition? Yeah, it was easy. Was it a battle? No, it was, it was, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say it was like, you, cause you realize those things are addictions, right? Mm -hmm. Those things become addictions. Like, like social media becomes an addiction. So yeah, in a in the sense it's, it's like, you have to, you have to check yourself and tell yourself like, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. or catch yourself, not get off of there. Mm -hmm. But every time you, every time, I feel like, uh, every time you say no, and like, like while battling like an addiction, it's like you get stronger. You add a pebble to your like, to your strength, you okay. know what I mean? So like that, I like that. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, the, the what no is a powerful thing, and you get stronger, and the other thing gets just a little more weaker. Yo, Proverbs 24, 16 says, even though a righteous man falls down seven times, he gets up and goes again. So maybe you fall off, maybe you get into that comparison mentality, or social media grabs you, you get angry and you freak out. Okay, jump back on the horse. Don't quit because it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish.